Hey, Jason here with Diomedes Industries, www.diomedesindustries.com. I'm back with another one take tutorial, and I'm going to do today how to make a welt for a new knife sheath. And so I actually kind of started doing this, and I realized I should video it for you guys. But what I've got here is the knife. This is a fiddleback camp knife that I need to put in this sheath. So the start is, you know, I've, I've already made the pattern for this and I've got it really, really close. There might be some adjustments that need to be made, but I don't think very many. Um, and, you, and we're gonna put this in here and sort of lay it out the way the sheath, the way the knife will lay out when it is in the sheath correctly. So once we have that, we can kind of hold it down and get it in the sheath like such and then we can trace a line using I use red pen if I'm doing it on the leather this is going to be buried inside uh, the sheath anyway and won't be seen but even if it was if I were to dye this on the inside this red is going to disappear that's a trick I learned from Chuck Burroughs who's wonderful he has a video out and you want to learn how to make a great sheath Chuck's a definite way to go um, so I've got this is kind of what the welt is going to look like. This is the welt that I use for my 3.5, 4 inch, and 5 inch sheaths. But obviously, if I put it in this huge camp knife sheath, you know, that blade alone is over 6 inches. So, uh, yeah, 6 and a quarter inches. So it's not going to work. But it gets me in the ballpark. And really what I want to do with this kind of sheath is, is leave this bottom sort of a... Uh, uh, having an area where I can stitch down, stitch around, and then stitch back up. It leaves a wider welt that allows for a hole to be placed in for a lanyard tube on these big sheaths that can make sense. So what you can do at this point then is use where that knife blade you traced goes to make the rest of your welt on the inside of this sheath. And so it doesn't have to be perfect the the first time around but uh you just sort of want to sketch in something that traces the blade now you don't want a a um you don't want a welt that touches the blade take this blade for instance this is 01 tool steel and it will rust if left you know wet and so putting it in a sheath that has a welt that's got damp because you're out in the field you're out in the bush um is not conducive to good steel maintenance so making a welt that comes away from that sheath uh or from that knife blade when it's in the sheath is is what you want to do now i've got quite a gap here because i'm trying to do something a little bit different with this sheath i've got like a quarter inch gap a, a, a sixteenth to an eighth is plenty if you want to make the tightest sheath you possibly can. I'm making this because it, uh, this is so big, I want it to insert a little bit, bit differently, and I can always modify kind of what it does later. The next thing is, now that I've got this traced with the blade, with this particular knife, there's no uh, finger guard here to worry about. If it did, I would need to treat that finger guard that would come off this end here as the widest point. I don't want to only trace the blade and and have the 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 um, finger guard catching all the way down with this particular one I don't have to worry about that guards are different everything's different but this is one way of doing this now I want to create uh, the width of the welt that's going to take one stitch all the way up and that for me is around 11 mil uh, I find that to be very comfortable to to do what I want it to do as far as a sheath goes so I'm gonna trace that all the way up just using this previous one that I've done. And essentially all I'm doing is 11 mil from the edge of this sheath all the way down until the knife starts to bend and then I'm tracing it around to leave myself enough gap there to make this proper. Then what I can do is to grab a sheet of tracing paper. And it doesn't need to be huge because uh, it only needs to trace on this well. However, um, this sheet is so darn big that starting with a full sheet of tracing paper is probably the wise thing to do. 
Now, the trick here is, is to lay it in where the welt will terminate, where the bend of the sheath comes in. And that gives you a straight edge to work with. And I lay my welt up to this first groove that I carve in. This will take some experimentation and don't worry about it. You can cut this well and sort of practice with it. You can even glue it in with rubber cement that's not permanent and go, okay, this isn't working and it's not working in these ways. Pull it out and adjust it. But then after I get this down, then I simply trace over the lines that I left. That's not the line I want though. I start tracing the knife. Start tracing over the, the lines that I left getting a rough idea. I mark the top of the sheath off. I probably went out of frame there. I mark the top of the sheath off and then what I can do is line that up as best possible and trace the outside of that welt. And I wanna leave some fat here because I can always trim off more well, I can't add more back on. So I'm gonna leave some fat there. So that sheath, that, that welt now is basically carved in. I need to darken these up and, and so I know where to cut. But as you can see here, I've got this sort of J shape, L shape, and it's very similar to the one that I have just adjusted to fit this sheath. So that allows me then to trace that over onto a pattern uh, if I decide that I like this one and then cut it out a million times on my leather. All right. So I just want to show you guys how to do that with some tracing film and some pencil or a, a red pen. And, and that will get you in the ballpark to get you started. And then you can make some tweaks from there once you get it installed. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. That's www.diomedesindustries.com. See you on the next one.